Good day everyone, I am going to teach you on how to wash your red cells and to prepare red cell suspension with various concentrations. Washing of red cells is sometimes performed to reduce allergic reactions due to contaminating plasma proteins or to reduce the concentration of potassium accum accumulating in the supernatant of the red cells during storage as an alternative to transfusion of fresher red cells in patients at risk of hyperkalemia. There are a variety of methods for washing red cells and the laboratory data suggest that variables such as age of red cell before washing, washing method and solution, storage medium and the length of storage time after washing can all affect the final red cell quality. So at the end of this activity, students are expected to enumerate the necessary equipment and materials for washing red cells, perform proper washing red cells, explain the principle of washing red cells, identify the proper washing solution and concentration used in washing red cells, discuss the importance of the preparation of red cell suspension for immunohematologic tests, explain the principle of red cell suspension preparation using different concentrations of solution, describe the effect of each of the concentrations used in the preparation of red cell suspension. So washing of red cells is performed to remove the unwanted plasma proteins including antibodies that might affect uh, or interfere with the, in, inter, the reactions. Washing is repeatedly suspending the whole blood with normal saline solution or NSS, mixing, centrifuging, and decanting completely the supernatant fluid. Some RBCs are lost during the process. NSS is used because it is isotonic with RBC cytoplasm. At this concentration, water will neither go in nor go out of the red blood cells. If we're going to use a hypertonic solution, water will move out from the RBC through osmosis causing crenated RBCs. On the contrary, the use of hypotonic solution will cause water to go inside the RBC forming swelling and subsequently hemolysis. So, washing of red cells is important for patients with uh, recurrent severe allergic transfusion reactions such as anaphylaxis or severe urticaria reactions not prevented by pre-transfusion, antihistamine, and corticosteroid administration. Also, for patients with IgA deficiency with documented anti-IgA antibodies and uh, Recurrent febrile and hemolytic transfusion reactions not prevented by leukocyte reduction and antipyretics and as well as neonate or fetus patients with renal failure before transfusion of potassium depleted units. So many procedures done in the laboratory require demonstration of antigen and antibody reactions in vitro. Thus, the addition of indicator cells to the system is needed. 2-5% red cell suspensions are universally employed indicator cells to display reactions which provides the optimum antigen concentration zone of equivalence. Uh, these suspensions are prepared by using previously washed anticoagulated blood. If the red cells are too low in concentration, they become difficult to visualize and in extreme cases, a weak positive can uh, fail to be detected. If red cells are too concentrated, it may be it may mask weak uh, agglutination. So a red cell suspension is a common reagent for many serologic procedures. Red cell suspensions provide the appropriate serum to cell ratio to allow for grading and interpretation of test results. So it is used for the following. You can use it for EBO and RH typing. Direct antiglobulin tests or DOT or DAT, compatibility testing, uh, specifically in cross matching, and lastly for red cell phenotyping. So, here are the materials and equipment needed in order to perform red cell washing and red cell suspension preparation. So, you can use your gloves, of course, complete PPE. Graduated conical tube, 10 ml, pasture pipette, test tube rock, aspirator bulb, centrifuge, 
Wasserman test tubes, 0.1 ml, 0.2 ml, 5 ml serological pipette, Nesco film or Petri film, marking pens, wash bottles, and as well as your test tube brush. For our reagents, we can use NSS, at least 0.85 to 0.9% solution, anticoagulated blood, preferably our EDTA, and as well as our distilled water. So for the procedure, you need to pipette 3 ml of whole blood into a 10 ml capacity of our conical tube. Then you are going to fill the tube with an SS until it reaches up to the 10th calibration mark. And then you have to cover the tube with its screw cap and make suspension by gently inversion. Or in cases of uh, Wasserman test tube is used or just plain test tubes, you can use Nesco film to cover the uh, mouth of the test tube and then centrifuge it for 5 minutes at 3400 rpm next you have to decant by aspirating the supernatant using a pasture pipette and be sure that the packed red cells are not disturbed and then resuspend the cells with another volume of NSS until the 10 ml mark so you have to repeat steps 3 to 5 up to 3 times and this process is called red cell washing and it should be done three times and then set the washed red cells aside so for the preparation of red cell suspension with various concentrations you can label the four Wasserman test tubes as 2% red cell suspension, 3% red cell suspension, 4% red cell suspension, and 5% red cell suspension using a calibrated serologic pipette you can drop as much Wash red cells into a separate washerman, washerman tube. The number of drops should correspond to 0.1 ml of RBCs. And then using a 2 ml and 5 ml serologic pipette, delivery, uh, deliver exactly the following required volume of RNSS. So for 2% red cell suspension, 4.9 ml of NSS. For the 3% suspension, 3.2 ml of NSS. 4% as a suspension 2.4 ml of NSS and for 5% you can add 1.9 ml of RNSS to our 0.1 ml of uh, blood washed red blood cells and then you have to cover each red cell suspension with Nesco film and then you are going to mix it gently so a proper red cell suspension has a tomato red color and then for our computation, so just remember the general formula, percent red cell suspension is equal to the amount of washed packed RBC over total volume or TV times 100. So if you're going to find the percent red cell suspension, so the given should be the amount of washed packed red blood cells and then divide it by the total volume so if you're looking for the total volume so you are going to use the amount of washed red blood cells divided by the red cells in decimals and if you are looking for the amount of red blood cells uh, you are going to use the total volume multiplied by the red cell suspension in decimals okay so you have it on the screen for the some examples and uh, if you just know the general formula then you can just derive uh, whatever is missing on the equation and that would be all and thank you so much for listening